welcome to this LFO Hangout. My name is Rachel Leach and I'm joined by the leader of the Little Symphony Orchestra, Roman Chinovich. We're going to talk everything violin um, because of the LFO's International Violin Festival, which kicked off just a few days ago and goes right through until July. If you'd like to ask us any questions, you can do so using the hashtag LFO Hangout and you can do that on Facebook or the YouTube channel or Twitter. So we look forward to hearing from you. So Roman. Tell us your life story. How did you <laughs> come to be a violinist? Well, it's, um, it's a long story. <laughs> it's um, my whole musical family, uh, starting from my grandfather, who was a uh, well very well-known Ukrainian composer who wrote seven symphonies and a great piano concerto, full concerto, and a lot of other stuff. And then my father, who was you know conductor, and my mother, who was opera singer, so it was just planned for me to be... Co <laughs> musical family. Exactly, to be another one, and it, that was actually my father's idea, definitely not mine. I didn't want to do it until I was 13, 14 years well, old. Well, you didn't want to be a musician at all? Well, uh, you know, I didn't have any, any, any thoughts about <laughs> what I want to be. Yeah. But, uh, but um, he started working with me when I was seven. I started when I was six, doing nothing for a year, and then he realized he should he should work hard if he if 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 you know he wants me to be to be good and um, basically that that's what I'm doing till now uh, you know just uh, sort of concentrating on the violin uh, so yeah, so I was working with him a lot and I, I had my teacher in, in Ukraine and then we moved to to Montenegro where uh, where my uh, my family is now and uh, and he was still working there with me and then after that i went to to study uh one year in in russia so it's basically it's basically him who who gave me all these basics and it's it's great uh russian violin school the the, the most famous um school in the world so which school was that well it's Russian. Oh, sorry. It's, it's, it's Russian, Russian violin school, uh, apart from, uh, from American and uh, Franco-Belgian school. It's, it's one of the strongest uh, schools there. Uh, so uh, I was extremely lucky to, to, to get, to get uh, a, you know, proper, proper teacher from, from beginning. From That's beginning. probably the, the most important thing. Once you, you've got a strong base from 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 the beginning you 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 are fine because because if uh, if you if you're trying to fix things later it's it, it can be too late so i was lucky in that sense so then how did you get from the russian school to london uh well it's basically you know i'm still doing my thing i'm i'm playing the way i'm playing and and um you know, um, musicians in London are very open, and we adjust quickly. That's something different. That's already, you know, uh, chamber music which we are doing, and and there is certain language we understand each other, and and, and we just follow each other. That's uh, I'm I, I still I continue doing what I'm doing, transferring it to to my colleagues and and getting something back from them and and it's uh, basically interaction so you were what age when you first picked up a violin six 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 and now so many years later you're still still consider yourself a student you're still studying you're oh still yeah learning it's it's uh art. it's learning all your life and it's with we, we, with our job you are you're kind of you're never never happy enough you're always criti criticizing yourself after every concert beating yourself and sometimes too much you know people are telling me you, you should forgive yourself you know, because because it's but that's the the the, um, the only way to improve if you if you want to be uh, on top and if, if you want to be really good you you you, you have to you know, once you're satisfied, that's it. I, I think you should, you should, you should quit. You know, close the, the yeah, case yeah. And, and stop playing because it's it's working on on yourself and learning from from other great musicians and from you know from books from from experience that you get. You know, it's every concert you play the same piece twenty times and every time you learn something new about the piece yeah. and you learn how to how to. Um, 
how to manage it better. You know, it's also, the, you know, stress, uh, responsibility. It, it gets different with, with, with age. Um, so as well as being an amazing international soloist, you are the leader of the London Symphony Orchestra. How are those two roles different, or are they the same? Um, uh, it's it's it became you know same amount of stress for me to actually play big concerto with great conductor and the orchestra, or to lead uh, you know great symphony with with uh, with the same you know great orchestra and great conductor. So. Uh, um, I would say it's more responsibility when you lead, because because uh, people really rely on you, and and they they I'm kind of link between the the orchestra and the conductor, yeah. and sometimes you know wha even when we uh, don't agree with the conductor, we we have to support him, we have to help him to realize his you know his ideas through through the music and 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 it's a hard work and it's it's uh, uh, it's chamber music with a conductor and uh, yes we are, we are playing together it's it's very hard it's 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 a big uh, repertoire is is very hard where here uh, when you play solo it's it's stressful very stressful but it's you practice and you kind of concentrate at home and you just go and you do it uh, where you know here it's every day different piece not every day but mm -hmm. basically sometimes we we play every three or four days we play different repertoire yeah. you know, different pieces diff you have to be incredibly quick you have to you have to know how to listen you know i learned I, i'm i'm better now i was uh, I was struggling at the beginning, of course, because of uh, you know it was lack of experience. But uh, I'm I'm sort of fast learner, you know, and and um, I can handle it better now. It's it was uh, when I, I remember my, my my first year with the with the LSO, so I, I literally thought I will die on stage <laughs> because of, of the you know, stress. stress because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know <laughs> how to react. So now it's now it's better still sometimes and did happens. you get the job in the traditional way audition you know they trial. were they were very kind to me actually to be honest i i was called uh, as a guest leader at the beginning right and so so i led some some projects and um as far as uh, as i remember it was michael tilson thomas my my first contact with the orchestra with did small tour in with the dublin concert and, and so they said after that they said you know we are looking for for concert master you know would you be interested to come and audition for us so it was very and people in a way they liked me already at the beginning so and and i and i had immediately good contact with with, with people so it wasn't like you know coming from from nowhere and just uh, playing in front of the whole orchestra that would be too too stressful for me this was this was uh, very flexible. I I did my audition. It wasn't long. It was actually uh, around twenty minutes of playing. The whole orchestra was there, almost the whole orchestra, and they were very positive. They were clapping, you know, and they gave me a probation year, which was already actually job in a way. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't even trial period. It was a job, and then that job was confirmed after one year quickly. Yeah. Even not even one year, eleven months or something. Wow. And I thought um, this is impossible. I was I was very young. It was f five years ago. Wow. <laughs> very five young years, that's very cool. very uh, young concert master. Yeah, five years. The time is flying yeah. in the LSR. You know, yeah, it's yeah. And the amount amount of work we are doing and the way we we live, the way we travel, yeah, yeah. The, the time is just flying. Yeah. So tell us about this violin. This is a Stradivarius. Th I'm extremely lucky more than lucky it's a dream of every every musician every you know violinist uh, you know to to hold something like this and all that is because of this extremely generous man um, who is our great supporter not only our supporter he supports many many fantastic violinists his name is Jonathan Moltz um, he was director of Bank of America um, and 
he just decided that that this should be given to the leader of the LSO, which is extremely wow. extremely generous, you know. And um, I'm I'm basically all I'm doing I'm I'm enjoying it. Yeah. M my responsibility is huge to take care of it and and be um, uh, extremely gentle with the instrument. But but the rest he's. He's he he's taking care of the rest, which is which is incredible. You you don't meet very often people like that, you know. And without people like that, we cannot we cannot really we we wouldn't be able to survive because you know how, how difficult it is. The the whole cultural story in in this uh, century is is it's it's pretty hard. And and with people like that, we are we are able to be, to be in contact and to to enjoy this this stuff because this should be definitely played. It, it cannot li you know lie down in the box and and so nobody nobody is using it. And we have know, actually a, a question come in already about that, which is how does it feel carrying that around London, taking it on the tube? Do you have I'm to be not, really I'm not I'm not yeah, I am careful, but I'm not thinking about that. You know, I've got good case and and I'm tr I'm aware of. What, what I've got on my back, you know, but if I will be too careful, then something will happen. It's just you have to, you know, you just have to hold it, violin. hold yeah. it properly, and yeah. it, it's a violin. Yeah. It's just a violin. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Do you know its story? Do you know how old it is? And it's uh, it's it? actually it's not only Stradivari. It's golden period violin. It's from his golden, golden his best period. It's 1709. Wow. It's a composite violin. So this is this this upper upper part is later and and but this is this is actually the the, um, the, the back is is, is the, the the right age and it belonged to um, Hungarian violinist and composer um, Tibadar Natchez. He was actually living in London and leading um, royal opera. Right. Orchestra. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it came back to London yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. different orchestra. Wow. Uh, incredible violin. This violin has everything, uh, from from you know depth on of of the sound, to 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 incredible power. Mm -hmm. It projects in any hole. Uh, it has so many color varieties that y that you can only you know dream of. There's a question, another one from the internet, saying about the strings from Joe at YouTube. What uh, strings do you use? Uh, well, there, there are cer cer certain strings I got used to. Uh, I even tried gut strings with, with this. It works. It works pretty well. Uh, I was a little bit skeptical about you know gut strings when, when I was playing Shostakovich with, uh, with the orchestra bec because I wasn't sure it will project enough, but it is. It, it, it projects, and uh, at the moment it's Pirastro Eva Pirazzi Gold, actually. Eva Pirazzi Gold, it works fine. And, you know, I'm changing all the time. Yeah, I mean yeah. We are all the time searching for, for, for something different, for a different sound. Uh, if it would be every day the same, you know, yeah. it becomes, yeah. becomes boring. So you always... And what makes Stradivarius that much better than everything else? It's just the sound. And why? Well, you know, if uh, I'm sure, if people would know why, then then many people would would, would do the same, would the, the same, yeah, the, yeah. the same copy of the violin. It's just the the way it was made, everything by by the you know the way he chose the wood, the the the, the way every curve is made. It's as, as you can see, it's it's incredibly. Yeah, it's very curved. You yeah. know, and um, it's vo varnish. It's and then it's time. Yeah, it's yeah. time. It's over. You know, three hundred years. And uh, and the way it was used as well, it should be played. Yeah. It should be played all the time. It should be so played by a So can we try a little experiment? Because we, there it is, it's gorgeous. Could you play us a quick something? And been behind you over there, we've got a kind of, the kind of violin that any student, any teenager would be learning on. Should I start on this one? Yeah, uh, go for it. First, and, and then. <laughs> well, you definitely can. It's we easier can. in the hole. In the hole, yeah. you would see. You know, massive. So this difference. is like a hundred pounds student violin. Mm.
sounded pretty good to me. <laughs> and now... Well, actually, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they sound well. And now the slightly more expensive yeah. and gorgeous... Yes. In, um, in a color depth projection, you know, just uh, volume and everything. You think you can do more on the Stradivari? Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Sound. You know, the, you, you cannot complain about violin anymore. You have to complain about yourself, about yourself. all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's your fault now. It's, yeah, yeah. it's definitely not the the instrument's fault. And but did yeah, you I was on a, on a I was lucky. Like uh, also, you know, thanks to 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 Jonathan, I had his Guadagnini for four years. So this is. This is relatively, you know, new thing. It's I'm playing one year on this, but before I, I played on Jean Baptiste uh, Guadagnini, also also great violin, yeah, in yeah, perfect yeah. shape without any scratch. Uh, it, l it looked like it was made yesterday, and not not you know, so many years ago. But uh, but Guadagnini's the Guadagnini sat wa um, sound was more flat and even louder than this, but this wins with colors. Mm. And, and uh, it's proved that the colors are the the main subject which project in, in the whole. Yeah, well there was it's a moment. It's not the power, it's, it's, it's the colors. They, 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 you know, fly over the orchestra and, and project in, in, into the, you know, last row. Great question just coming from Twitter, somebody called Lindsay. How do you go about choosing a violin? Obviously you've had that one loaned to you but if you were choosing your own to, to purchase, it would be definitely would I would go for old violin of course the the the, uh, the trouble is finances immediately mm -hmm. because with the with the prices you, you cannot you cannot catch catch that because the the, the, the value of this fiddle grows 11 percent every every year wow. so you know our salaries, they don't go <laughs> up so fast, <laughs> definitely. <Yeah. you> know, <laughs> especially being a you know, classical musician. Uh, so uh, in order to buy something old, you would need to you know, work hard and, and spend many years you know, collecting and, and trying to repay the, the fill. But, but that's the dream of, of you know, every, uh, every violinist to have um, old violin mm. it just makes a difference in the sound it need, it, with the piano is different piano you buy new instrument and and it works better than not all of them but yeah. you know if if it's good stanway it will it will work better than you know stanway 40 years old definitely with a violin it's it's the other way around and would you say you were 20 years old beginning your career without much funds, would you just try several out until you get, you get a connection with it? Or is it the sound you're looking for? Or yes, it's, it's, it's sound. I, it needs to work for you as well. Yeah. You know, it's, if it works for, for somebody else, it doesn't yeah. mean it will it work for you. And uh, it depends which kind of player you are as yeah. well, you know, for, for, for what you need that violin. Yeah. If, if you need that for, for chamber music, sometimes you would be, you know, s satisfied with with uh, one kind of sound, yeah. and and uh, if you're, you know, uh, really trying to to become a kamikaze and play a solo uh, all the time, win competitions, you need something which projects and yeah. something which is very very uh, powerful. Of course, um, you know, I was, but it doesn't mean anything because you know I was I was 20 years old when I when I was playing this big competition in Poland. Yeah. And it was 50 of us, and some people, they had struts. They borrowed struts, especially for that competition. I had, you know, 10,000 Deutschmarks violin, and I still got second prize. Yeah. Uh, it, it was solid instrument, you yeah. know. Between this and, and something really great, but not so expensive, the difference is sometimes it's minimal, yeah. you know. And sometimes even, you know, modern instruments, they, they did this research, they were, they were comparing violins, and they were doing this um, playing 
behind the curtains and Stradivari actually lost to some modern instrument. Wow. Know. So it depends. So now the question is how they will sound after 30 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether they will still, you yeah. know, have this quality or the quality will drop. Yeah. With this, you know, it, it, it won't go wrong. Yeah. Mm. If what it's in good shape, yeah. Bow? bow is, you know, another another very important thing. It's uh, it's a French bow by uh, made by Simon. Uh, it's very old. It's 1800, beginning of 1800, and, and that makes a uh, oh massive difference, massive difference in the wood and the weight, uh, as well the how it works with yeah. you. If if it suits you, some people uh, they love. Um, you know, they like um, light bows, some people love uh, heavy bows. Uh, this one works with any violin. It's, it's, it's really a very fine e um, example of Pierre Simon. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely lucky to, to... This is something which belongs to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need to make a plea for more questions. We're getting to that point now where we need your questions. So if you use the hashtag LSO Hangout, um, I will ask Roman whatever you want. No. Um, that looks like, just from this close up, that looks like quite a light bow. It looks quite bendy. No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's something not. in between. It's 61 grams. It's, yeah, they are, you wouldn't believe uh, how, how important it is and how expensive th these sticks could go. It's, it's sometimes, you know, top bows, they, they, they go up to a quarter million pounds, you know, which is, which is <laughs> you know, <laughs> somebody would say. And how often do you have to get it re- Head. We had I I do it uh, every month because of because our sh schedule is crazy and because m my soul sh um, schedule is quite busy and you know it it needs to be it always needs to be there yeah. new yeah, yeah, yeah. hair good strings yeah. that you know so so tell us a little bit about this this the schedule of the LSO what kinds of things might you do within the LSO within a week well look now we now we went to for example we went to to um, states mm -hmm. with Michael Tilson Thomas and Yuja Wang and we did 12 concerts in a little bit more than two two weeks which is totally crazy every yeah. day you play every day. you uh, every day you end up playing in different city you yeah. know and it doesn't matter if you're jet lag or not, not jet lag if you don't feel well you feel well you have to be there you have to give your your best mm -hmm. because it was every concert was sold out completely sold out and and you try you try your best and sometimes you know people ask me how do you do it how how <laughs> how can you, you know, after four or five concerts already, how can you still concentrate? You have to. There is, you don't ask yourself this question. You just do it. You just do it. And then, you know, after after it, you go and play a big concerto, something you learned many years ago, something which is always there in your head. It stays there forever, and and <laughs> you take it from somewhere, <laughs> and you you do it. It's it's. Uh, but the you know comparing to other European orchestras, for example, German orchestras, or you know, uh, people they they can't believe when I when I talk to them. We we, we spoke to our friends um, from Berlin Philharmonic, and when I told them what we are doing, you know, they, they they were shocked because they said maybe Vienna Philharmonic is working like that because they combine opera yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know concert life. Yeah. But but what we are doing sometimes it l looks scary, you know. Yeah. Sometimes when I see uh, at the beginning of tour, when when I get this small it's not small, it's quite, you know, thick book about, you know, every concert we are doing on tour. It, it scares me. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, better yeah. not to think yeah, about yeah. it, you know, because, uh, you know, we're, uh, I'm young, for example, I'm, I'm still quite healthy, but, you know, but, but it's, it's tough. It's and very tough. And then in London you have film sessions? In London we are doing, you know, sometimes it's um, nine hours of, of working. Yeah. Sometimes we are doing two sessions and rehearsal, or, or the other, the, the other way around. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky because I'm working only sixty percent mm -hmm. at the moment. The other people are doing uh, everything, and uh, I don't know how they do it. It's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of them. And you know, the, the main thing is, it's, uh, it, they leave their heart on stage every time, which is. 
which is which is something extraordinary. I, I saw it first time. I I never saw this before in my life. The, you know, the way they play every concert, it's like okay, that's it. This is the mm -hmm. last concert in mm -hmm. our life. So, Craig on Twitter is asking, how do you fit in practice? Uh, I rarely practice. No, I. You know, I practice. Be, 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 be so you practice hours. And hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to be honest. You know, it's uh, <laughs> you always practice, but um, but you know, before I used to, I used to practice all day long. You know, and and so so I was building my base to be st strong. Once once it's strong, you can you can rely on that. But if you know, if the kids are asking, then they should you know. They should practice a lot. Practice <laughs> definitely. <yeah. laughs> But you know, in between between rehearsals and concerts, whenever I've got one hour, I will I will do what what I need to do, you know. And um, uh, I'm you know sometimes I'm relying on my talent <laughs> too much, I would say, which is which is not good. But you know, if there is a time, I will practice. But sometimes you don't want to touch violin, you don't want yeah, to yeah. see your instrument, you don't want to have, have to anything to do with music. You just want to have ten days. You know, wi without without violin, it cleans your brain and it helps. For me, for me, it works like. William on Twitter is asking whether practicing scales is worth it. Definitely, uh, I was always practicing caprices. That uh, was, and you know, people ask me that question many times. Um, and I was talking to to great violinist Shlomo Mintz about that, and I said, if I play. 24 caprices Paganini every day, would that be enough to, to, to feed your technique? He said, yes, but you have to play 24. And if, you, if you're not doing that, uh, you, you, should, you should find s s some sort of alternative. It's scales, scales are great. If, if you've got, if you're patient enough. You, you know, do scales every day? I don't, I don't. I was, I was, Paganini person always. I was playing, you know, Paganini caprices. I recorded them. They will be released soon, hopefully. And um, I, I, that was my alternative. I, I was always concentrating on this book. But uh, there are other ways to 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 you know build your your, your violin technique. Uh, scales are are something like bible for for many for many great violins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say yes. Yes. I'm not doing it so so scales often. Scales are important, William. Yes. Um, Brendan on Facebook, completely different topic, has asked you what's your favourite film score that you might have played on? Ah, oh, well, it's uh, definitely Star Wars whenever, you know, <laughs> I think... Are you uh, actually on Star Wars? Uh, it's not happening, actually, unfortunately. That's it's an exclusive there that maybe we shouldn't have said, but are well, you on any of the previous Star Wars? Uh, okay, I, wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, but I was, I was playing that uh, for Encore many times. I was, I was. Yeah, we just uh, cough up a lot, doesn't it, for Encore? We, we, we do it with, with all the, you know, with all different different conductors. We even did it with, with, with Gergiev in China. And every every time it's, it's you know, uh, it's like a bomb exploding in the hole after, after we do it. Because just, you know, the way how LSO plays that piece. And, and it's a great music. It's proper. Oh, yeah, it's it's proper, proper piece of music, yeah, yeah. you know. And, and of course, I met John Williams now on this on this tour. Great guy, genius, of course. Fantastic composer, fantastic person. No, no. The uh, LSO has a you know huge history of you know recording uh, <laughs> music for f you know all this famous movies. So hopefully you'll be on not the next Star Wars. Uh, hopefully. But the Star Wars after. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's a high. That would be a highlight. Yes. It's amazing, isn't it? All the things that the LSO does and all these incredible concerts and tours. It's always Star Wars is the thing that. Oh yeah, well, yeah. Uh, you know, because people recognize that. You know, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, you get better result with that than you know playing just a quite five sometimes, <laughs> which is normal. So we're in the middle of this International Violin Festival. Yes. There's a lot of amazing stuff coming up. On Sunday, you're doing a pre-concert talk at Barbican at 6.30, where you will be comparing different types of violins again. <laughs> not this explain. one. Not, not, not this that one. <laughs> that one. That one you check against. So what are you looking forward to from all these soloists and concertos? Is there one that's particularly exciting? Well, I'm you? looking forward to, to our uh, you know, becoming concert on 26th of, of, of April. It's a very special thing for, for um, strings in general in, in our orchestra. It's something very intimate. It's completely different from what we are doing. 
uh, because we are not typical chamber orchestra who are playing without conductor. And this, this time we have to play without conductor. Yeah. We have to rely on our instincts, our ears, and the way we understand this, this music. We, we've got, uh, it's always very um, little time, you know, to, to, to prepare, prepare such a difficult program. We are doing that in the Maiden Schubert, we are doing Shostakovich Violin Sonata, transcription for, for, for chamber orchestra by Pushkarev, and we are doing Shostakovich Eight Quartet. Uh, transcription by um, by Barshai. Uh, incredibly difficult difficult program. Very little time, but you know. Uh, and are you in charge? There's no conductor, right? So well, you yeah, we are all in charge. I would okay. say, you know, we are all responsible. It's it's you know, uh, every player should should give maximum for for, for this. And this is something we are looking forward uh, every year. Uh, it takes a lot of you know energy but but uh, on, on the end concerts were so far great we, we released this um, CD this last one? year exactly and the uh, reviews apparently were were fantastic this is um, the LSO string ensemble and Roman uh, sort of in charge doing Tchaikovsky and Bartok which is on LSO live it's a fantastic CD is the one you're doing on the 26th is that going to end up on LSO live do you know Let's see how we play. Okay. It, that's the plan. That's, <laughs> that's the, the plan. plan. Yes, that's the plan. Um, yeah, or, you know, my my other stuff. Uh, it's you know just regular concerts you play. Uh, sometimes with good orchestras, sometimes with n not so not so uh, great orchestras. That's part of our life. But uh, but this is something coming up very very special for mm. all of us, and I, I'm really looking forward to. it. I'd love to see the, po maybe I'll come and see the politics that go on when you're putting that together, because obviously you're the leader, but then there's, all of the LSO are terrific musicians. Oh, they're, they're incredible. And then you've yes. got the principals, you know, second violin, viola, cello, you know, they're all incredible. Sometimes it looks like a street market, they all want to, you yeah. know, they, they all have an incredibly strong opinion. The uh, arguments and it's, it's a huge egos, you know, yeah, yeah, big yeah. personalities, uh, people who, who played so many years, you know, um, all this fantastic repertoire with, with great conductors, they, they, they know a lot about music, you know, and we argue, of course we argue. But you're we heading should. towards the same goal. We, we, we should, and, you know, sometimes I say, yes, you're right. No, actually, you know, in chamber music, nobody's right, everybody's right. Yeah, so, yeah. so, in this sense, I'm, I'm very flexible. Sometimes it's hard, but, but y you, have, you have to handle this because, you know, uh, people know what they're doing, and that's the, the price to put all this together. Yeah, yeah. Catherine on YouTube is asked, you always look like you're having a lively chat with the person sat next to you, your desk partner, often <laughs> during my children's concerts. Oh. Um, you're often chatting. Um, what are you chatting about? Are you chatting about the music or are you chatting about what you're going to do after the concert? Uh, That's a question different that things sometimes, you know, different things. Sometimes we're having fun. Uh, Carmine is, is, you know, fantastic, fantastic vi uh, violinist and, and <laughs> we both love violin like, like, like kids, you know, we, we, he always, he's got, you know, so many crazy solutions about so many different things and, and it's a different school, different, different approach and uh, mm, uh, I absolutely love him and I love uh, Tomo Keller who, who was my other you know, de desk uh, partner. So yeah, we are. You know, we are trying to have fun in in doing all this craziness. Mm. Uh, otherwise, you know, sometimes <laughs> you um, you are so tired yourself. You know, you you're. You're just too tired, you know, of playing the same piece so many times, and and we are putting a bit of you know life into. S sometimes maybe we are doing s some jokes, you know, and yeah. <laughs> <You're having laughs> um, playing some funny stuff, uh, and we get complaints <laughs> as well. <laughs> but but um, but it's it, it's all part of the of the story. Yeah. There you go. So what's coming up on Sunday? You're doing this pre-concert talk, and then yeah. when is the girl Shaham? Concert is that Sunday? That's after tomorrow. That's after yes. tomorrow. Yes. And you're doing Friday lunchtime concert at St. Luke's with me on the 22nd of May, which is completely free. So that would be a good one. Some more questions are coming to my. Is it already sold week. out? Yes, it's definitely. already sold out. Yeah. 
Apart from London, yes. which concert hall are you most com comfortable playing in? And that's from Albert. We just, we just did... Um, you did a lot in America. Lot we did a course. lot in America. I quite enjoyed a lot the uh, Disney Hall. Is that in LA? That's in LA. Fantastic acoustic where you can really hear each other. You know, that's something we are, we are missing in London and hopefully it will, it will happen that we will get great hall because it's so important for us. We, we, you know, sometimes when we are in hall which, which has bumpy acoustic, w we don't know what to do because mm -hmm. we got to very dry barbican and, yeah, yeah. and it's 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 tough hall. Barbican is tough hall. Oh, if you s if yeah, it, it, it has some moments, but but uh, it's it's tough hall. Yeah. When you go, you know, to to Japan, for for example, Suntory Hall or any other hall, any hall in Japan is just phenomenal. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. Uh, yeah. Ricardo is asking, how do you judge auditionees, and does it get hard when you're seeing a lot of auditions that are all very very good? You know, LSO is the orchestra full of personalities, and and when you listen, when we listen aud audition, we are not you know uh, only looking for a fiddler. We are looking for somebody who understands what he's doing, especially when it comes to orchestral excerpts. You know, we we can see immediately if the person is aware of of what's going on in that moment in the symphony or you know uh, oh they're just playing an extract uh, they can they can sometimes play great you know tchaikovsky concerto and and then you see while they're playing this orchestral stuff that, that they've got no clue what's going on yeah. you know but sometimes you al also want to give them chance you know to see how they're going to do um trial period because some people are extremely fast and they learn quickly yeah, yeah, yeah. and they adjust quickly and that's something what we need but it's definitely in general we are we are looking for 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 interesting people interesting players you know characters, characters exactly because there are f you know few amazing characters in, oh, yeah. in that orchestra that's why it, that orchestra is you know so special yeah, yeah. andrea is asking what's your favorite concerto that you've learned or, I guess, want to learn? Oh, that's a difficult one. I've got quite a few. I love Shostakovich one. I love Sibelius. You know, I love Brahms. Uh, I, I'm learning Prokofiev one. I just did Prokofiev two, which, which I adore. And uh, basically, 20th century is, is still quite a few things to learn for me. How long does it but take to learn a concerto? Well, you, l you learn it kind of fast. You learn it in a few weeks. But then it takes a couple of years just to, to, really, to really understand the piece. And, and uh, it's a mileage. It's all about the mileage. It's, y y it's basically about how many times you performed it live with the orchestra, you know. Uh, I spoke about this with, uh, with Snyder and uh, there was something. I played with him and he said, you know, how many times you played this piece? I said, you know, maybe 15. He said, wait until 40. You know, 40 times, that's, the, that's for me the, the period where, where you really know what you're doing wow. and you know every part of it, you know. So... Because um, I always think when you watch somebody playing one of those amazing concertos like the ones you've mentioned, I always think, God, are they bored that they play this piece? But obviously no, not really, not, not time. really. You, every time you listen, you try to understand what, what you did wrong, why, why. To, you're analyzing your... Mm. Your brain is working. That's why sometimes we don't sleep, n you know, the night after the concert because you are you're working all the time. Your brain is. You ask yourself so many questions: Why I did this stupid thing? Why? <laughs> what could be done better? You know, next time. Why? You're fighting your nerves. You're fighting so so many different different things. Yeah, yeah. An amazing question has just come to my ear from Sean on Twitter, who's asking: Is learning an instrument just now a preserve of the rich? Uh, it depends also, you know, which which country. It's uh, you can still you can still get uh, if you are lucky. If uh, in Russia, for example, you can still get a um, great teacher. Mm. You know, and uh, I was I was lucky. I had my father, so 
Uh, it doesn't have to be, actually, no. I don't think so. I have I to stand up for LSO Discovery as one of their animators and say that yeah, yeah, we have a huge program teaching children and helping children and getting children in touch with music, and all the orchestras in this country do. So I think we're all of us collectively, all of the orchestras are really addressing that and making it not a preserve. Later period. on for career making, oh, you yeah, know, it thing. helps to be wealthy, definitely. You know, you can, you can travel to any teacher you want, you can play for any person you want. Yeah. You can, you know, for me that was that was hard part. You know, my parents they couldn't collect uh, enough money for me to go and study in Israel. It was I remember it was fifteen thousand dollars at that time. It was um, when I was fifteen, so um, eighteen eighteen years ago, and and that was that was totally impossible for mm. my father to 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 put this uh, amount of money t together because we we came. From quite you know poor country, yeah, and uh, and some other kids, they had that they they had a great teacher. They could study in New York or they could study yeah. in you know Paris. Uh, actually, Paris uh, Paris is free to study, but to get there, it's it's quite hard. And um, yeah, it helps if if you've got you don't have to be incredibly rich, but but you need to have some funds to to invest in 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 your kid. If you, it's everywhere the same, if you want. If you want a um, good school, it's it, it like here, you know, private schools are good schools. That's true. It's, but it's, I think it's, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's a very good question, you know. In, in th that was the good thing about, about the whole school system in Russia. It was always free. Yeah. And, you know, Tchaikovsky Conservatory is, is the best, one of the best conservatories in, in the world. Maybe not now. But it used to be, and it, it, all these great people, Oistrakh, you know, Kogan, Gilel, Strichter, uh, Rastropovich, all the, all the fantastic, you know, uh, best well-known uh, world-class musicians, they, they, they came from, from that background and they, they all got it for free. Mm -hmm. Later all on, they were charging, charging a huge amount of money for, for, for the, their fees for performance. That's something different. But uh, in order to get this, you know, great school, it was all given for free. Yeah. Here, um, in a way, if you're good, you get scholarship or in, in the States. You know, some countries are still free, like, like France, as if, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm right. Germany doesn't cost so much. But, you know, if, if you want to pay for, for, um, for a school in, a, in the States, it's, it will cost you, I don't know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year. And that's that's um, that's another you know difference between cap capitalism and and, and mm -hmm. those ex -commu -commu communist countries. But I think to take it back down to children, it's not that expensive to start. I think no. anybody could start to learn an instrument. It yeah. depends on what your yeah. path is. The most important thing is good teacher. Yeah, exactly. Somebody who will inspire your kid and. Uh, that's the most important part of, of the whole story. We've had a great question from somebody in Montenegro whose name I've forgotten, so if someone can tell me that name again. Lydia Petrovic. No. Oh. Do you know this person? <laughs> I think I do. Uh, she's asked what your connection is now with Montenegro. Do you really uh, know this person? Uh, I think I do. My God. <laughs> I'm really bad with names. I'm really bad with anyway, Well, I go, there, I go there every year. I play with them. Um, with the orchestra, uh, I'm not sure I, I went last year, but but it's almost every year I go. My parents live there. I, I love that country. All my friends live there, uh, you know, from my childhood. So and it's it's gorgeous ca country. It's beautiful. It's fantastic weather all the time. Great food. So so I just love it. But whenever I've got, you know, some free time, uh, I'm trying to go there. I'll go there this summer to, to of course, to visit my my. My um, family. So you have strong links. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, George on YouTube has just asked, "What is the number one tip for being an orchestral player, a good orchestral player?" <laughs> I think there you said is no earlier. Was it not listening? Yeah, it's 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 not only one tip. It's it's basically, you know, it's it's a lot of stuff. It's it's the the main thing is to to be able to adjust to other people. If you are, it's good to be strong personality. It's good to to to. N to have your own opinion, but here it's you know you've got 18 players in the section, and you have to die for the section, not for you're, you're not you know competing with with somebody. It's it's just 
you're 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 trying to win this this the the, the sound of the section. Yeah. And and LSO is incredible in doing that. You know, you've got maybe stronger players in in some other orchestras, but they will never sound like like this section. This also second violins also you know they're they're incredibly s people learn that so well here how how to how to adjust how to adjust and how to not you know you don't yeah, you yeah, never have somebody yeah. you know sticking from from the yeah. from the whole structure yeah mm, uh, it's um, ability to to learn fast yeah you have to learn fast in, you have to sight read well and you have to understand what w how to how to listen to music how to how to listen the whole thing uh, Ricardo on YouTube again has asked about shoulder rest do you ever play without your shoulder I rest? can play without I, and I was al always lazy lazy not to take it off completely when I came to Zuckerman he he just you know took my shoulder rest and he he threw it away he threw it into the bin I said <laughs> 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 what's going on he said, "This, this, this is disaster for your sound." But then, you know, since I learned with this, it's it's just maybe too late for me now to yeah. to, to change because the you either hold it with with your mm. head or with this finger, you know. It's yeah. So, so it would be more pressure here immediately for me, and you know, it's it's good when you're in third position, but if you if you have to have to play very virtuosic, difficult stuff, it's completely different technique, especially going yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can. It's not. Some people cannot even play a play, play a note like this. They yeah. they get. This helps, but definitely, if if somebody can play without this, it's. it's we used to have a better. principal second violin who didn't have shoulder rest, didn't we? Oh yeah, yeah. He never Grat, had shoulder Grat, yeah, Grat, yeah. That's uh, it's his father. It's, it's that. Like but that. if you see all great Russian players, nobody is using that. Yeah, yeah. Nobody. I think we're getting to uh, a natural conclusion here. I just want to say that there's tons of stuff going on at the LSO and at St. Luke's to do with our International Violin Festival that you can come and see, including free free concert tour on Sunday by wonderful Roman. Roman, it's been a joy and a pleasure. Thanks so I believe you're going to play us out. What are you going to play for? I, I'll try to play a small part of, of Isai Sonata number three, Balada. I won't play the whole thing because, because it's quite long, but... Uh, I'll try to demonstrate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.